It may only be an hour outside of Manhattan, but the quiet town of Cranberry, New Jersey feels like it's thousands of miles away. In this historic village is a little French bistro called Hannah and Mason's. Friends Chris and Brian were co-workers here under the previous owners and jumped at the opportunity to buy the restaurant three years ago. Can we get serious now, please? All right, come on, focus, focus. Uh, I was afraid from the beginning to take the restaurant. Oh, what the fuck am I doing? This. I was also a little short of cash, so I figured Brian knew the operation. We worked together already, and he had the other half of the cash. We could do this. We could do this. But looking back, no, I don't think I would go into business with Brian. This was a mistake. I'm very laid back, and I, I don't think I let a lot of things bother me. Brian, you suck. Whatever. Brian's very lazy. Brian can be lazy. Brian needs to step up a lot. I just find it difficult to be motivated. That's just how I've always been, and I find it difficult to change. When your heart's not in it, why doesn't anybody else's be in it? Why? I agree. My partnership with Brian is not equal. Enough. Enough of this shit, please. I generally pay most of the bills. I spend a good portion of the day ordering food, doing prep lists, working on menus. Generally, I'll work the line for most dinners. Brian, why are you clean? Hold on. I don't particularly like to work the nights, so we're only open three nights a week for dinner. Done. There's no more to be had. I really don't think we're losing out on any business. There's nobody here. People call and they ask, you know, can I come in on Tuesday? And no, we're not open. And you can't bring in the customers. You can't bring in the money. We're having a very tough time making ends meet. It has been increasingly more and more stressful to come in and look at how much we owe money to, and the bills are piling up. And it's it's a little too much stress for me. All right, this pretty much sucks. Hopefully, we make some money tonight. I go to try to deposit my paycheck in the bank, and I can't because there's no money. I get sick of how much money we spend on bounce check fees. It's it's a horrible feeling. Oh my gosh. If Hannah Mason's ever had to close, I would be lost because I wouldn't be able to support my daughter. You know, for me, it's a career. I don't know anything else. I don't want to really know anything else. I'm trying to hold out for hope. If it goes on much longer, I don't know what I'm going to do. What a beautiful, quaint little town. I can't think of a better way to spend Valentine's Day at Hannah and Mace. Mason. I guess I couldn't afford the end. That's not a good start. Right, here we go. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good. Follow me. Hi. OK? Excellent, that's fine. Lovely. And so you are? Nick. I'm Nick. Yes, OK, sir. great. Nice cool. to meet you. Hi, watch. Good to see you too. And um, what do you do here, Nick? I'm the manager here. Manager. Mm -hmm. You're young. I am very young, yes. I'm only 23 years old. And I bust my ass out day in and day out. Chris. Yes. He's sitting down. He's very cute. <laughs> when I saw him walk through the door, and I says, oh my gosh, look at this man. <laughs> this is Maurice. She's going to pick her. Nice to meet you. Gordon. Happy Valentine, Happy Valentine, my darling. Happy Valentine's to you. Excellent. Is this a picture of your wife? Yeah, that's my dear lady, yes. Can I see? Oh, please, yeah. That's the 14th Valentine's Day. We haven't been together. She's beautiful. Thank you, my darling. Can't wait to taste the food. I would suggest just to start off with the baked onion soup. Right. Are you asking me or telling me? If you want my suggestion, baked onion soup. Let's go for that, shall we? OK. Um, the quiche, yes. a little slice of quiche. OK. Thank you. Um, I'm fascinated by the lamb lollipops. OK. Lovely. Got that. Lovely. Thank you, my darling. You're welcome. Hmm. Well, the start might be onion soup, that's for sure. We're going to start with onion soup. OK. Some people might say, oh, French onion soup is French onion soup is French onion soup. But I think ours have a distinct, you know, presentation. Wow. Let's start off with zero out of 10 for presentation. Lovely. Ooh, greasy. Kate with cheese. Kate with bread. The only thing missing is the soup. What is that in there? Absolutely tasteless. It tastes like I've just had the dregs from the dishwasher. Hardly any soup. That is shocking. That was very different. Did you like it? And uh, once you got rid of all the bread and the cheese and the gunk, it just okay. very, very bland. But I'll bypass and hopefully the uh, 
Lamb lollipop. We'll be tasting. Want those next? Thank you. You're welcome. Fine dining. A fine mess. And he didn't like this. <laughs> Off to a great start, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, no. Once he got past all the, the gunk with the bread, he said the broth was just bland, and he's never experienced anything like that before. He's never experienced anything as amazing as that. We've gotten, you know, fairly good reviews here, so I find it hard to believe that it's really as bad as he says. Say something, Chris. Get mad, Chris. I want Chris to get pissed. Uh, this is not going to go good, because if I can't get him with the French onion, I can't, I'm, nothing's going to be good. Wow. That is a big, big lollipop. My goodness me. It's an absolute nightmare to, to cut. Undercooked. It's hideous. Chris, no matter what anybody says, I still think you have the best onion soup and the best lamb. If he talks shit about the lamb, he's, he's out of his mind. It's completely <laughs> ridiculous. That sauce there. That's hideous. It's like a caramel. It's sweet as anything. Three. Um, what did you say that was? A roasted garlic jam. God. Nick, would you have a little taste there? It's like someone's put a topping of a granulated sugar caramel. Although Gordon didn't like the lamb, all the employees and all the customers think that that's our best dish. Very sweet, the sugar. Suddenly, the lamb is raw, and it's obviously cold in the middle because it hasn't rested. OK, let's, uh, let's go for the quiche. Uh, darling, I, I, you've got to turn away now. I don't want to see you facing that shit any longer. Absolutely appalling. You say the order of rare, not raw. And the sauce is a spoonful of sugar. So, Chris, why, why did that go out like that? Where's my car keys? You got to go out there next time he says something. Uh, yeah, I will. I will. You start to sound like my wife now. You're cowering. Whatever. I don't know. Chris is, is definitely scared of somebody telling him his dishes aren't good enough. It frustrates me as a manager because he needs to put his foot down sometimes. Here, possibly my dining, they're going to be saving the best for last. Lovely. And what flavor quiche is it? It is mushroom and spinach. Mushroom and spinach. Yes. Lovely. Thank you, my darling. You're welcome. Damn. My quiche has collapsed. It's gone into, like, this sort of meltdown. It's almost like it's been left out of the refrigeration all day. And as for the salad, well, you do. Get really nervous when the ends of the salads are all black. Hmm. I have a feeling I'm getting yelled at already. And they sort of collapsed and went all sort of um, runny and soggy. I'm sorry. Huh? Happy Valentine, my darling. Thank you. Oh, good. No, he cut into it and it just collapsed and it's all gooey inside. And... The customers mostly have good things to say, so it's a little shocking to hear someone say that almost everything that we served him was horrible. Bye, darling. This quaint village had put Gordon in a pleasant state of mind. First name is Chris. Chris, I'm Wesley Brigade. Unfortunately, the food destroyed it. This is my partner, Brian. Brian? I'm not really nervous to meet Chef Ramsay. You know, we thought everything was gross, but whatever. OK, lunch was hideous. It's really important, before we go anywhere, I need to know the, the foundation. How many nights a week are you cooking? Well, we're only open three nights a week for dinner. <laughs> Are you three nights a week? Why? Being ridiculously cautious and fearful and the way I've led my entire life. You played safe. Yes, sir. But sending those kind of messages out to the local community that you're closed longer than you're open is telling the locals you're closed. If he wasn't here, what's his weak points? I, he doesn't have a love or a passion for the business itself. So how come you're passionate and you're not? We're just different people. Yeah, business is a business. Yeah, it's a restaurant. Yes, I love to cook, but... It would be easier sometimes just not to own a restaurant. When was the last time you made a decision? I made a special. What was it? Turkey panini. Turkey panini. Right. I, I'm just, you know, I don't know what you're looking for. Passion, strong will, determination. You look like you're just about to lose your virginity. <laughs> Sorry. Something needs to happen to relight this flame. Now I'm going to see how you operate it, OK? I'll see you in two minutes. Right now, I am absolutely unfocused for dinner. I, I, I'm going to be thinking everything I send out is, is shit. Unbelievable. All right, let's just get focused and let's get ready for dinner, because dinner's going to be a debacle. Gordon was shocked to find out that Hannah and Mason's is closed more than it's open. 
But this is Valentine's Day, a day when all restaurants are busy. This is our special uh, Valentine's Day menu. And a great opportunity for him to observe a dinner service. I'm going to make a spinach dish. OK. So we have two tables upstairs, right? How many people do we have coming in in the immediate future? I knew that going into Valentine's Day and knowing that Chef Ramsay was going to be overseeing everything that was happening, I was definitely a bit nervous. Big idea. So, is that ready to go out, huh? No, sir. Display purposes only. Seriously? What the fuck is that? It's apple cobbler. When was that made? Well, it's anyone's guess, Chef. I mean, not more than a week ago. And... Holy shit. That's a... Uh... A molten lava cake? A molten lava cake? Yeah. No, a molten rock. Yeah. Lava rock. Well, do so what do you do with that? What? Do you play ice hockey? No, that's, again, display purposes only. Right off the bat, we, we were in the shits right off the bat. Why would we even think about going to a customer with something a week old? Oh, we should have. Thank you, Chris. Brian. Yes. No, that doesn't look good at all. I agree. Yeah. It's disgusting. Yeah. Hello? Get rid of it. OK. Yeah. As tensions mount in the kitchen, customers are about to celebrate one of the most romantic nights of the year. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. I wanted to go in and thinking of leaving. So food sat up there. Nobody taking it. I hit the bell. What? Come on, guys, huh? Whew. At least you don't work for a long time. I could never. <laughs> no way. No fucking way. I think after the first day, I would just leave and never come back. I wouldn't even care if I didn't get him paid. <laughs> Chef Ramsay telling me that, you know, we do things the wrong way just doesn't really work for me. Oh, my God. Ryan. Yes. Two seconds. And he always never shuts up. <laughs> Who's checking this stuff? Does, does this guy just send food out? Yeah. But who's checking it? Nobody's checking Nobody, it. Nobody, no. Okay. Jesus. There's lettuce all fucking rotten there. Yeah? Lettuce rotten uh, there. Yeah. Fisk, you gotta pick through the lettuce yeah. better. I really am trying to. Like, I'm not well, even... These ones are no good with the rotten lettuce. Let's just go. Oh, fuck me. Where's this coming from? Jesus Christ almighty. Sir, has it been washed? I did not wash no. that. I did not know. We don't wash spinach? We get it pre-washed. You get it pre-washed? That's the first. Oh. Look, every time I dig my hand in, it's all rotten. You know, just do just you. Toss it. Yeah, it's gross. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't toss it. Why don't you eat it? <laughs> no, I'd rather not. You'd I rather wouldn't, not. I wouldn't eat it. But you charge people for it. OK, there you go. You shouldn't, this shouldn't be sent out. No. You should open your fucking eyes. We'll try to fix whatever issues we have, but I can't. I'm not going to cry in the corner about it. You know, life goes on. So. Upon further investigation, Oh, my God. Gordon discovers that something is missing from the display-only dessert tray. Have we served that dessert on there? Yeah. There we are. That dessert's been served from there. That's no good. What's this here? It's been leaking in the fridge. Whoa. That's really old. It's a bread pudding. That's a bread pudding. Oh, sure. That's a shrimp. Fuck. Oh. It's not. Yeah, that's disgusting. Why is it bubbling? Because it's old. That's yeah, gross. We'll get rid of all of this. No, 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 no. no. Nick, I know you're busy. Yeah, I'm fucking shitting myself now. I feel when you know things aren't going good, I, I just as soon get out. You know, just move on to the next thing. Now, yeah, where's Brian? I know you want to run away from it. I'm not running. No, away. I can't run away from it. Yeah, I've just been watching and fucking shitting myself for the last hour. What are you doing to people? Give me an answer. <laughs> you know, we can't oversee everything. We assume that. You okay. Know. Take me down to the fridge. I want to see how you fucking really work. I cannot believe that this is how you guys are running a restaurant. In my head, I was thinking, we're going to be screwed. That's what in there? That's the walk-in freezer. That's the freezer. That's the walk-in freezer. Look at the mess here. What's this here? Bacon. Yeah, obviously, bacon smiles. That's from lunch. Yeah. Yeah, five years ago. You leave a spatula in there like that. I'm sorry. Nah, fuck off. I cannot believe 
what you guys are doing here. There was so much going on. My head was spinning. My head was going to explode. You know, I, I thought to myself, this is a disaster. What's that in there? Shit, that didn't get put on. Oh, my god. I don't know what the fuck oh, that's all fuck about. Oh, my god. Oh, no. This is not good. Raw chicken. That should never happen. You know? Oh, my god. Chris, it's fucking chicken against raw chicken. It's it's fucking. Hey, panini head, are you listening to me? Yes. You're gonna kill someone. I'm eating here. Partners, partners in crime. You should be ashamed. We are ashamed. You've just contaminated the town. Now, Nick, Nick, yeah. stop. Yeah, everybody. Right now, this is not a romantic. Eat out. This is a Valentine fucking massacre. It's a disgrace! How can you do this? I'm closing the place down. Switch it off! It's Valentine's Day, the busiest night of the year for restaurants. But what the customers don't realize is that some shocking discoveries left Gordon with no other choice but to shut it down. Switch it off! What do you want me to tell the people? I'll tell them. You tell me then, what are we gonna tell them? Or you think I'm gonna stand here and watch you serve contaminated food? No. Yeah, yeah, fucking shut it down, switch it off, and condemn it. I knew that we were gonna run into some problems tonight. I didn't know it was gonna be this bad. Mark, turn everything off. That's it, we're done. No one touches or serves any food right all the way down. I suggest you start coming up with some suggestions to the customers, yeah? Yes, yeah? sir. Yeah? Hurry up, Brian. Um, Chef Ramsay is shutting us down. I feel absolutely horrible, and uh, certainly not something uh, I expected. Just, just for the easy. Never in my wildest dreams thinking that we would have to shut down. This is the most horrific thing I've ever had to deal with in my life, quite frankly. I felt horrible. What I've just discovered. It's totally unacceptable. Enough's enough. Chris. Yes, sir. If you are passionate about food yes, and sir. you feel deeply about it, I want to hear it. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to, to tear it down and start over. You've got a big pair of balls facing those customers tonight. What they can say for the partner that you are in business with. Where were you? How many tables did you talk to? How many customers did you apologize to? No. How much support did you give the waitresses, the manager? Damn. That's right. You were doing jack shit, mate. I do feel like I carry the bulk of the restaurant. Oh, it absolutely bothers me that Brian doesn't take on some of those things. You make me sick. Unbelievable. On a night when they should have been busy serving, the staff finds itself cleaning up the mess. I don't even know where to start. I mean, I never really thought I'd be in this situation. I'm really trying to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm trying to hold out for hope. Of course I'm worried. This is my life. I need those customers to come back. Before Gordon unveils his plan for change, he explores the town of Cranberry looking for inspiration. This whole town is built up on farms. Perfect position to have a local restaurant. Wow. Amazed by the number of local farms in the area, Gordon decides to check out the seasonal produce. Hello, ladies. Huh? So happy Welcome to, to Turian Orchard. We're glad to have you. It's beautiful. Thank you. Absolutely Thank you. amazing. Just well, driving around yeah. locally and just looking at some of the farms. I mean, it's a chef's dream. <laughs> we pick everything every day. Amazing. And in terms of variety of apples, how many do you have here? We grow 35 different kind of apples. Pretty good crunch there. Mm, delicious. Right, shall I uh, just help myself? Yes, yeah, your yeah. favorite. Fill it in. Excellent. Lovely. Look at the size of these. Great. That is amazing. Yeah, I'm going to put these to good use. Excellent. What are you going to make? Uh, oh, that's a secret. You're going to have to come for dinner. All right, we're available. Thank you. Inspired by the fresh, locally grown apples, Chef Ramsay heads back to the restaurant to work on a special he has in mind for tonight's dinner service. Right. What are they called? Apples. Apple fucking smart ass. You asked me what they were, they're apples. Yeah, no, but it's the way you say it, you're with no enthusiasm. If I want to learn to cook like you, I'll definitely buy your cookbook. But what, what, this, what, what, it's just what, not for me. 
why are you in business running a restaurant when you're completely passionless about talking about ingredients? It's a fucking apple. Yes, they're local apples. It's great. Okay, when was the last time you tasted one? It's been a while. I haven't been to the local orchard Tur to get an apple. Taru Farm, well, I've been there for the last two hours. Okay. It's like being around your parents when they're arguing, and it's the most uncomfortable thing in the world. And uh, now I hated it. Yeah, it's a good apple. You don't get it, do you? I do get it. They're delicious. And so talking to you about it, it's like, oh, really? It's an apple. Yeah. One a but, day but keeps the doctor away. Do? Am I supposed to jump up and down? No, right not now? at all. It's just becoming clearly evident that you are incredibly soulless when it comes to food. You're entitled okay. to your opinion. If Chef Gordon keeps pushing me, I just won't be here anymore. You won't see me today. As Bryant cools off... OK, apples in. Gordon teaches Chris a new special. Everything has to be relaxed. Pork medallions with caramelized Braeburn apples. And then just finish with a hint of the mustard. Yeah? Yes. Hoping to put the Valentine's Day massacre behind them, the staff gears up for dinner service and takes advantage of the local produce. The apples are good. Are we, uh, are we ready to go, yes? Yeah? OK, guys, let's go. Let's get them in. I have no qualms about leaving. I feel bad for you guys, but there's no way. If you start swimming with that shit again, I will fucking leave. Let the bloodbath begin. I'm going to do the best to get Brian more focused for dinner. Brian, why don't you show me your passion and lead the brigade tonight? Sure. It's fine. That's fine. That sounded enthusiastic, didn't it? I don't feel like I need to prove anything to him. I mean, I am who I am, and what are you going to do? Special, we have sauteed pork medallions. I will have the filet mignano. Harvest salad. You fire the entrees on table five. What's first up, uh, Brian? What's that? What's first up? What's uh, I'm running around trying to get all this stuff together. Um, with uh, five tickets on the board, uh, is it worth getting something going? Brian, it's a very quiet kitchen. Normally, it's quiet. We don't tend to yell, shout out, or... So how do you guys know what's going on when no one's talking to each other? We haven't said anything. I guess I'm not running it then. That makes me angry and not getting served in the restaurant. Beginning of service, Brian told me he's going to run the kitchen and run it with some passion. But so far, I don't see it, I don't feel it, and the kitchen is backed up. Customers are complaining about waiting, and I don't think Brian actually gives a fuck. I'm just waiting for my for entree. Which one? 102, 102 still? OK, I get it. 102, how long? Two minutes, three minutes, four? Not really sure. How long have you been waiting? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Fuck. Dude, this is taking forever. Brian, yeah. should you tell Nick to slow down the orders or what? He should know. I mean, we shouldn't have to tell him. He could tell that we're backed up. So. Oh, my god. Come on. Brian is not putting in enough effort. It makes me frustrated. He needs to step up more. I feel pressured when someone's there watching me and telling me I can't do it, but I don't need him here yelling at me. That's not going to make me want to work any harder. Your lack of excitement and passion bugs me. I'm struggling to come to terms to why you're in business. I'm not like you. I, I can't get excited it's over it. It's not what you're doing to me. You've got to understand that. It's what you're doing to the business. The business for me is the bigger picture. I'm not here to massage your ego. I'm really sorry. Customers are complaining about waiting. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Uh, I just felt like I was being picked on and whatever. Panini Head, I'm worried about how much you're putting the business down. But you I'm won't not. accept that because you can't be honest with yourself. Because I'm not. Oh, okay, you're being what, a dick about it. What am I being a dick about? Talk just, to me. Just the way you talk don't to me. Don't run down the stairs like a little girl. Talk I'm not to gonna, me. I'm talking to you. You don't talk to people. That's your problem. Calling people a Panini Head. No, that's, I called you. I, I called that's you. like fucking I, sixth grade. How I fucking old you. are you? I, I don't need someone to tell me, you know, talk to me like that. I'm past that point in my life. It's just ridiculous. Enough is enough. I'll leave it. Fuck, man. It's an hour into dinner service, and Brian has threatened to leave the restaurant. I'll leave it. With no food leaving the kitchen, Fuck, man. everything is at a standstill. You don't, you think, I don't think he's going to walk out tonight. Yes, you will. I don't, he's on the verge right now. He's, he gives, says he gives it another hour. He says if Ramsey keeps taking it, then he's leaving. Brian did get a little frustrated with Chef Ramsay. And I don't know what's going through Brian's head right now. If I didn't give a shit, you know it. I would have left a long time ago. I'm dedicated to this place because I want to be here. I want to do this. I want, I want to make it work. What I want is just for you to show a little bit of interest. I, I am stop interested. Moping around. If I wasn't interested, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be doing this. 
front. In my heart, I really, I do care. Maybe I don't show it all the time, and I should, but I definitely need to show that I have more interest than what I'm perceived to have. Great, hey, let's go. This is table 11. Table 11. Um, I gotta wrap a couple more, of course. Table 102, an FO. Okay, here we are. I'm sorry about the wait. I apologize. Hit the bell, please. Wow. Keep going, yes? That is going. Table three. Table three. Table three. All right. Thank you so much. You were braver now. Can you feel that really goes well together. Thank you. We started pumping things out. It took a little bit while in the beginning, but once we got going, it, it went over pretty well. Thank you. Have a good one. Good news tonight is that the special sold out. Yes. Yeah? Great news. Brian, you're smiling for the first time since I met you. I'm changing right now. I mean, I need to be able to have a positive attitude all the time. Let me tell you something really seriously, honestly. If you actually think this restaurant in this community is going to be here in five years' time when you're mediocre, bang. We know that, you know, we have to do something different to make the business grow. Thank you. And you're absolutely spot on. We have to be special. And we have to cook locally. I think the products that we had today were excellent. So it would be good to, you know, put a lot of that into our menu. That's what we have to change. Yes. Tomorrow, we're going to revamp the whole fucking place. I think we need a change, but I'm nervous, scared. Tomorrow morning, this place becomes the crown jewel within Cranberry. I really don't know what to expect. Is that clear? Sounds good. Is there anyone here that's not fired up? OK. Let's do it. With Brian finally on board, Chef Ramsay moves forward, transforming Hannah and Mason's from a dreary bistro into a delightful cafe. Right, good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Excited? Yeah. Extremely excited. <laughs> I've got you in. Oh, shit, that I was believe awesome. you. Happy with the end? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now it's time to open a new chapter for Hannah Mason's. Let's go. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. my God. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. the floor. Oh my god, I just couldn't believe how great it looked when we walked in. A new deli counter showcasing local fresh products. Oh my god! We didn't just renovate this place, we changed the meaning of it. The breads, the homemade cupcakes, everything made locally. I like it. Local farms share the pride and you show it off. This place can become synonymous with these farms. You know, it's got synergy there. Oh my God. It's amazing. It's, amazing. it's the happiest I've ever seen you. <laughs> <laughs> if this doesn't really light your fire, I don't know what will. I'm glad Chef Ramsay came and you know he made these changes. It's amazing. It really is. And I'm hoping that, you know, it makes our business all the better. Beautiful. I think I'm in shock. The restaurant is gone. I just don't know. You don't know? Oh, no. You changed your mind? I don't know. It's a complete... Hannah Mason's closed last night. Hannah Mason's Bakery and Cafe opened today. I just don't know going forward. It's, I, mean, I mean, everyone's afraid of the unknown. I knew there was going to be changes, but this is a complete departure from what we've done. Hannah Mason's didn't close last night. We just changed. We and changed turned completely. A new completely. chapter. It's, oh, it's overwhelming. Just Embrace change. Just being a realist. You're not being a realist. Really You're being pessimistic. Chef Ramsay obliterated Hannah and Mason's as it was, and it's not going to work. Gordon has revealed that the new Hannah and Mason's will be an upscale cafe and no longer a French bistro. But not everyone is comfortable with the change. Embrace being change. Just being a realist. You're not being a realist. Yes. You're being pessimistic. Right. OK, we'll go through the menu. Previously, the menus, two menus before lunch and dinner. Absolutely crazy. You've got no idea how simple this is. Fine dining has gone. Yes, it's small, but it's powerful. Fresh, vibrant, rustic, countryfied cuisine. Brian. I'm ready. Let's get started. Let's see what all this stuff looks like. Chris. Look at that face. <laughs> <laughs> 
I just re and just reading the menu. Thinking in my head, it's different. It's it's definitely different. Definitely. Why did you ask me here? This is because we needed a kick in the ass. This is, I, Jeff. This is I, it's just things going through my head. That's all. I even well, let's see. Chris is really nervous to make the change, just for the fear of losing business that we have. Yesterday. He astound me. Today, you're <laughs> shocking me. Because I'm shocked. Oh, <laughs> my God. I need to get my hands in it. While Gordon had the staff focusing on the new menu, his team put together a farmer's market, an event to showcase the new relationship between Hannah and Mason's and the local farm community. Uh, let's go. Hi, guys. Good morning, Thank you. Chef. Uh, good morning, how are you? Right. Look. Uh, fantastic. Awesome. So, we've got some <laughs> taste of olives, we've got some scones, get the staff involved, and uh, make sure all these menus go off as well, yes? Okay. Hello, everybody. A little chilly out today. Scone? Right, fries given out, a little taste. Let's go. So, this is our new menu. We're reaching out to the community. It's going to flourish our business to a whole new level, you know? You got to see it. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Man. The new menu looks really good. It looks yeah. great. Hi. 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 How are you? Congratulations. Thank you. For you. Yes, it is. Thank you. Yeah. It's great for me to meet the local farmers. I love the idea of using locally. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed our apples. We did. They were awesome. Well, let's see if we can work something out so absolutely. you can use more local produce we all year round. Can. Yep, we are yeah. going to absolutely do that. Great. I hope that people are going to be happy that we're using local growers. And people are always happy about that. And you taste it. You definitely taste the difference. There's no doubt about that. After a successful farmer's market, Gordon introduces the new menu, a menu created to take full advantage of all that the local farms have to offer. Let's go through the menu, yes? First of all, just look at the color of it. It oozes what? Vibrancy, freshness. freshness. The dishes you can recognize easily, the ribeye sandwich, the smoked chicken salad, beef hash with eggs, the entrees, a really nice uh, winter uh, free-range chicken stew, the lamb burger, braised short ribs, uh, fish of the day is gonna be the swordfish, yeah. I like a lot of the items, and I like the menu, and I like the simplicity of it. But I think there's going to be a learning curve. Any questions? No. No? no? Excellent. Did you see the sign? It's Hannah and Mason, not Hannah and Mason. All right, come on in. We're right here. We have a couple changes to our menu, as you can see. The chef's special today is a grilled swordfish served with tarragon mashed potatoes. This morning, I thought Brian would be really anti any form of change, but he's actually embraced it quite well. But Chris, he's been on and off the train all day long, and the jury's out as far as I'm concerned on him. But tonight, we'll find out who really wants to turn this place around. It's been an interesting launch. Gordon knows that in order for Hannah and Masons to make a profit, they must successfully flip tables and have two complete seatings. Chris. Yes, Chef. We have to flip tables tonight. Well, what does that mean? Making money. I know you're not used to it, hey, but we've got to do it. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm in control at all for what's going to happen this evening. Not until the tickets start rolling in. It's just the anticipation at this point. I think the special sounds really good, though, too. The swordfish. Here she comes. First order. Well done, yeah. Brian, one cup salad away, please. OK. Four pour us up. Gently, gently good. Nice. Two and 20 gone, Brian. Uh, yes? Yes, yeah, Chef. First course on 23 just went. Right. This tastes so amazing. I did not buy it. Much fresher. Tastes so fresh. Salad soups yeah. moving out. Yes. Quickly, yes. Yeah. Any, com any complaints? Any feedback? No complaint about the freshness yet. No complaints about no the complaints freshness. Complaints about the freshness. That yeah. was a joke. Yes, it was. Yes, sir. I've never seen him move so quick. You want? Yeah, let me just. Check. Yeah, yeah, I'm a yeah, thermometer out again. I'm alive. I'm, I got a pulse. Yeah, no, no, I'm just. That's moving. Yeah. Huh? Surely there must be a difference inside here. With Brian rising to the occasion and getting appetizers out promptly. All right. Gotta start turning those tables there now. Yes. It is now up to Chris to deliver the entrees so that the next round of customers can be seated shortly. Next table. Uh, right now, nothing else fired. Nothing else fired. Give me Nick, please. Anything about to be fired? Anything happening or gotta turn? Chris. He's killing me. I said you're killing me. Uh, Nick, are we falling behind or? Yes, uh, I think we are falling behind. 
unbelievable. Last night, the appetizer took 20 minutes to come out. Tonight, they're only taking 12, but that's not the problem. The problem is the entrees aren't coming out quick enough, the customers are staying at the tables longer, and we need to flip those tables if we've got any chance of surviving. Get some tables up, get some tables up. And yeah, with the queue at the door now, we've got to push these tables out. Go on, what are you waiting for, Marie? Table four. Table four, yeah. Open up, buddy. What's going next? Come on. You got backing up with tickets. You got to talk to these two guys. Someone needs direction here a little bit. I'm going on a salmon and crab and a swordfish. So I need mashed potatoes, please. V86 mash, unless we got some somewhere else. Having run out of mashed potatoes, Chris makes a very telling decision. Not going to be serving mashed potatoes on the uh, swordfish anymore. We were running low on mashed potatoes. Um, and I didn't think it would be a big deal to sub something out. I'm thinking in my head, I don't want this to get backed up, then the whole house of cards falls. Can't we put potatoes on, Chris? I think time we get them peeled and get them put them on. Might be tomorrow. Oh, here we go. It's just excuse after excuse after excuse. excuse. Yeah. You own the fucking place. Yeah, yeah, you're damn sure. So you want to tell the fucking customers we can't be bothered to make a fucking mashed potato? We can sub something out. I just find it embarrassing. Why can't we sub something out? He said take it out. out. And we could sub something out. Just too easy. Ah, oh, fuck it. Do the easy room. Yeah, tell the fuck off. We can't be bothered anymore. You're the boss, chef. That's bullshit. It's the heart of dinner service, and in an effort to keep up with the orders. Go start turning those tables there now. Yes. Huh? Chris decides to cut corners. Not going to be serving mashed potatoes on the uh, swordfish anymore. Oh, here we go. We were running low on mashed potatoes. Um, and I didn't think it would be a big deal to sub something out. I'm thinking in my head, I don't want this to get backed up, then the whole house of cards falls. Just too easy, ah, oh, fuck it. Do the easy route, yeah, tell them to fuck off. We can't be bothered anymore. You're the boss, yeah. That's bullshit. All we need to do is peel half of the potatoes, we get them on. Huh? Julio, peel some potatoes, please. I've tried to make it as simple as possible so you don't get backed up. You're all right, you're right. We're and I'm trying to relax things a little bit, to speed things up a little bit. So, okay. Yeah? Yeah. So we get out of that fine dining mentality and sort of, you know, push it forward turn over. Bit. Okay. You'll be surprised over a year how many tables you turn quicker. Which we do, we need to turn them. The staff quickly preps the mashed potatoes in an attempt to get back on track and push entrees out. Uh, potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. Service, please. As Chris finds his groove, the kitchen catches up. And now, for the first time, this dining room is turning tables. She's going to sit you down, and we do have a couple of tables getting up in here. And I promise, as soon as we get them cleared, we'll get you right down. And three more salmon and crabs up, a macaroni. We used to have nights where we would do 30 dinners, and it felt like 85. Everything's looking good, guys. Beautiful. The relaunch, we did 85. It felt like doing 30. It was a nice change, I got to say. All right, pick up, please. It's just going to take Chris a little while. He's not really good with change. I mean, think about it. We've had the same food on the menu for almost four years now, so change is not a thing for Chris. Are we starting to play down, or...? Yeah. yeah. With two dinner seatings completed, the new Hannah and Mason's has successfully cleared its first major hurdle. The buzz was phenomenal. The vibrance. The freshness and the feedback was great. However, more importantly to this restaurant is quality control. A special is to enlighten a customer to what the chef's about. Uh, fair enough. You can make mash. Four potatoes peeled, bang. That's where we discipline ourselves. Yeah, you're right. Uh... You're right, I'm saying you're right. Relax, guys, <laughs> you're right. Brian, I want you and him to be better. Do you understand? I want you up there and not treading water down there. Uh, I look forward to the, the future. I, mean, I just, I still think there's a lot that we need to work out, um, Chris and I. So, you know, there's still some more changing to do. And this is a start, so we're excited. I came here because you asked me to come here, yeah, to put this restaurant back on the map. Yeah, the minute I've gone, yeah, it's up to you guys. But one thing you have to do is make money to survive. That means commitment, heart, desire, and the real hunger to make it work. I give you a new menu, new decor, new equipment, new launch. What I cannot give you is the heart to make this successful. That can only come with it. And that's what it's going to take to get this place 
pumping. I think Brian sees that he could put his stamp on this place now as well. I think in the past he thought it was only Chris's place, Chris putting his stamp on I think he, he sees now it's a clean slate, and he could put his thumbprint on it. Call me, yes? I will. Yeah. Murray has your cell, right? She has my email, she has my cell, yeah, and she has my home address. One thing she hasn't got is my fucking hotel room key. <laughs> <laughs> right, good night. Yes? On, oh! Thanks, Jeff. Yes. Thank you. Take care. That was tough. Honestly, really tough. From the minute we had the Valentine's Day massacre to a successful relaunch tonight, it's been a tough week. And I personally feel that I've been dragging Nick, Brian, and Chris every inch of the way. And I don't know if they've got the desire to go that extra mile. But what I do know is these apples are delicious. LaGrange, Illinois a well-to-do commuter town outside of Chicago. Terry and Carol were high school sweethearts here. Two years ago, they fulfilled a dream and bought Cafe 36, an upscale French bistro. There you are. Oh, thank you very much. And for you, sir. My dream was to have my own restaurant, be my own boss. OK, thank you. I'm 58 years old is at a time when most people are thinking about retirement. I'm just going to head out of the way for a while, unless you. OK, 6.30. Unless you want me to Philip. do something. I was very nervous with the whole idea, but let's try. Let's go forward with the dream that he wants to do. OK, talk to you later. It gets me upset that sometimes he doesn't delegate. I'll do the vacuuming. I'll clean the bathrooms. I'll get the bar stocked. Leave this here for Terry. You I go do what you got to do, then we'll go smoke. Terry, why are you doing this work? And you have a staff standing back there. Why are you doing it? OK. And the onion soup? And the onion soup. It's coming up. That's coming up right now. Pino, he's really a great chef. The food is tasty, it's good, and it's done right. Pinto's sanitation skills aren't the greatest. He, uh, he tastes a lot of his food as he's making it. The running joke is, you know, do you want a side of saliva with that? I don't like sticking my fingers in food. I'll give you a whole thing. I think that Cafe 36 would be a better restaurant without Pinto. Well, nobody's calling out tickets, so I don't know. You know, I mean, it's just somebody's got to be in charge. This is the problem. Terry and Carol keep talking about how Pinto is so awesome, and everybody else knows Pinto really can't run a kitchen. Table 13 waited 25 minutes for a house salad and a soup. The customers reaction in the restaurant is very uh, positive. Mine is not cooked. They were raw. I'm going to send mine back. Really, it's, it, we're hurting at this time. We'll have nights that we'll only see six or eight people for dinner service. We just don't understand what's not working. I am so sick to my stomach. I have chest pains. Carol and I have never taken a paycheck since we started the business. Here's the bills. More. More bills. I really love my husband. I want his dream to come true, that's all. That's that drive and that passion of the dream to say we want to make it happen. Thank you. <sighs> Cafe 36. OK. Here comes Ramsey. Where? I just saw him walk by the window. Hi. Hello, Mr. Ramsey. Good afternoon. Nice sir. to see you. Pleasure to have you with us. My name is Terry Gilmer. I'm Jerry. one of the owners. This is my wife, Carol. Ah, How do you do? How are you? Very nice to meet uh, you. My, very my happy pleasure. To have you here. I'm so very happy to be here. Very excited. What kind of restaurant are you running? We try to style ourselves after what we call an American bistro. American we try bistro. to have fresh seafood, steaks, chops, sandwiches, uh, pasta. Yeah. I can't wait to yeah. taste. OK. Right over here, sir. Oh, the restaurant's big. How many seats have you got? Uh, we can seat about 85 in the main dining room. Right. And how many's booked for lunch today? We have 11 people in the restaurant right wow. now, and that's unfortunately a little bit of a typical day for us. Uh -huh. This is Douglas. Douglas uh, will be your Douglas, server today. When Chef Ramsey walked through our doors, you know, I was feeling really good. And I thought, you know, this is going to be great. Uh, the specials today, the uh, risotto today is a uh, wild mushroom. That's pretty good. I'm dying to taste the risotto. OK. Yeah. Uh, this fascinates me. I've never seen a duck and a strawberry together. Yes. Well, you yeah. good chance to try it. And I'll take that rare, please. Rare? Thank sure. you so much. The of the day is a sautéed Atlantic salmon. I serve an awful lot of them, but I'm not a big fan of any crepes at all. Doug, it's a special. 
Okay, no. Okay, so the crepes aren't special. No, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, why, don't, why don't we give them a shot? Then let's give them a shot. Yeah, exactly. Then you can tell me. I love that honesty. Right. Let's go for the crepes. I know not to order the crepes because they were frozen. Frozen crepes are crap. I got three courses. Pinto, please fire the crepe for a soda and the duck salad, please. For Chef Ramsay to coming in, it's, it's very exciting. Am I nervous? No. I think everything is good. Always makes me feel nervous when I sit next to plastic grapes caked in dust. And the plates look like they've been picked up at the local flea market or the dollar shop. Is this the normal um, quite so lunch is normally this? Lunches, we average three or four people. Three or four? Yeah. Unfortunately, one of the problems is we don't get the food out in time for it to do a business lunch. Holy mackerel. <laughs> Let me go check on your food. Certainly. Show. You ready? He wants a duck salad rare. That doesn't look very rare, right? No, I'll get it. You know what? Bring out the whole thing. The guy's full of shit. I'm ready for him, man. Yeah. No wonder no one comes for lunch. It's taking this long. Coming out way too slow. Well, we fired it all. Does food always take this long? Yeah. I see your food put up. I was just going to go grab it. I'm relying on the Chicago to suburbs train being pushed through the dining room. It's so old fashioned. All right, Chef. Wow. Wild mushroom soda. The train. The plate is it. hot. That's the wild mushroom risotto. Yeah. And oh, your man. duck salad, rare, yeah. with strawberries. Place are dirty. They're just old plates, or? Yeah. OK. Risotto. And I really got nervous when he started eating. But I believe that the food here is well, well above excellence. The risotto's exploded, mush, and it just disintegrates in your mouth. And it's very salty. We'll bypass that. Don't ask him to make another one. Way too salty. Little rice is mushy. OK. Just telling you what he's saying. That's fine. The risotto came out nice. It was good. It was really good. I always know that risotto was overcooked all the time. Once Gordon Ramsay comes in here and tells him, this is mush, this is, you know, it's like, yeah, I've been saying that for months, boy. Orange strawberry duck. Right. Oh. Jesus. What a bizarre combination. What's with the walnuts? What are they doing? Candied them. The candied walnuts. Candied walnuts. As if you need more sweet on there. That definitely didn't work. Pinto, the crepes. OK. When you see a chef putting those ingredients together, it's, it's rather sad, really. Clearly, no one's controlling him, and he hasn't got a fucking clue. OK, mm. chef, the next course, your salmon crepes. They come out like that normally? All the time. What have they done? Chop them up? Um, no, that's how he makes them all the time. He just puts extra on top, I believe. Who makes the crepes? Um, I believe the crepes are store-bought. No. Yeah. Damn. Look at that. And this is the speciality. I'm fed up with eating crap of the day. When you think of a crepe, you think of something nice, light, crispy, tasty, not something mushy and hideous. That is shocking. I thought you were looking are out you for me. Are you taking this away? Oh, yes, please. That's yeah. looking up for you. It's even going to bypass the pigs. I don't like it. None of them. I don't think there was anything he even said was OK. I was just in shock. And where did you train from? I trained uh, in Italy. And working in an Italian restaurant? Correct. I thought the risotto was an insult. It was mush. OK. Where is the risotto rice? It's in the cooler. Can you get it to me? Yes. I'm just amazed that you lived in Italy that length of time. You studied there, you worked there. And they didn't even teach you how to make risotto. What's that date? 220. What's the day today? 28. You've got the balls to walk in here on a Thursday and serve that shit from a week ago. It's mush. There was no bad and uh, it's still good. It's nothing smelled bad. Why in your tiny mind do you think it's still fresh from last Saturday? It was in the uh, reaching cooler. A reaching cooler confirms in your mind that it's fresh. Well, I'm sorry, but I mean, you know, this is really weird for me. This has been going on for a while. Pinto tries to stretch the food as far as it can go, and sometimes too far. Bring me everything in that fridge as a week old. You call yourself the executive chef? You should be ashamed. You served me risotto from a week old. Oh, my god. All this is from last week. I was very shocked to find out uh, that we were not serving fresh products. It was such a horrible feeling. And then I was getting very angry and mad inside myself to say, how can my staff do this? 
chopped clams. We're keeping clams from a week ago. We'll smell go. that. What does it smell of? That doesn't smell good. Smell? Congratulations. You haven't managed to kill anybody off. What are you doing? You're not a real chef, are you? Yes, I am. What? Any chef that keeps hold of that crap in his fridge for a week, two weeks, in my mind, has given up. A lack of caring, a lack of responsibility, and more importantly, ignorance. Fuck me, what more can you say? Carol and Terry have put everything they have into Cafe 36. Unfortunately, this restaurant may be too far gone to save. That lunchtime, that was a tough one, that one. Are you trained in the business? Have you had a ration no, before? No, I have not. No, right. not me. Have you ever had a ration before? Absolutely not. You've never had a ration no. before? No. Terry, sorry, how much did you pay for the business? A million two five. No, million no. one. Million one, I'm sorry. We put our own savings, IRA accounts. We had a large four-bedroom home that we sold and used the, the proceeds and the escrow from that to put into the business. And you're here lunch and dinner? Yes. Carol drops me off in the morning. We only have one car between us. Uh, we sold the other one. Everything is very scary right now for Terry and I to see where we're headed. It's hard. It's hard when you just put your faith in something and really believe and believe and believe, and it's still not coming. I respect the level of sacrifice here, but you're pondering and querying to why the business isn't coming through the door. Correct. It's on the back of the food. When food's crap, it's crap. The chef's cooking me a risotto with rice that's eight days old. I, I just, I'm still in shock. Yeah. You have to focus on the wrong, not ignore it. Right. Yes. We certainly got an eye opener today. Yeah, I'm panicking <laughs> on both of your behalf. I'm, I'm so sorry. I don't, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. You know that? No. Don't take it the wrong way, please. Right. No, I understand. And I'm here to make this work. You must understand that. And uh, that's, you know, the objective from day one. Um, good you. to catch Thank up. You. Yeah, I, we got I, a, we got we got we got, it. we got a mountain to climb, and yes. uh, it's uh, it's a tough one. As the staff gets ready for dinner service, Gordon ventures into the kitchen to do a more comprehensive investigation. Pesto vinaigrette looks like oil out of my car engine. Unbelievable. Everything's frozen. Frozen and defrosted. Place is a mess. Pinto, certified exec. What's going on here? What's all this stuff floating in water? That's a group are taken out of from the freezer. We keep it uh, fresh frozen. Fresh frozen? Yes, sir. There's no such thing. It's either fresh or it's frozen. I understand. What's this in water? It's a salmon chef. Frozen? Yeah. It was a fresh frozen. We keep it frozen, fresh frozen. It tastes more fresh. It's mad. It is. You're making all this fresh stuff, freezing it, and then taking it out two portions at a time per day. Because it doesn't sell enough. And what? If you had a plenty of business like this. Nothing to do with business. That's lazy. Everything's frozen. Trout stuffing. So we take it out. We slow thaw it. It's, yeah, cold. Cold. Boom. Cold. Yeah, slow thaw. We stuff the trout, then we refreeze the trout. Yes. I rest my case. Certified jerk. The chef of the grouper was a strong smell. That's it. That's it. A chef's uh, opinion. It's dinner time, and Gordon is about to see how this fine dining restaurant is anything but fine. Hello, good evening. Welcome to Cafe 36. Welcome this evening. Would you care to see our wine list? I'll start here with you. You're Alice, how are they? They're terrific. Would you be able to do the salmon material Sure, I can do that. We need a pair of cobia and a salmon, too. I'm very nervous, very nervous and very scared, and we're just hoping for the best. Escargot. What is that? This is the butter that we use for the escargot. It's parsley, chive, garlic. The butter's frozen as well. What don't you freeze? Here's Chef Ramsey, one of the best chefs in the world, telling Pinto that you're doing shit wrong. In fact, you're doing it bad. It was great to see Pinto eat a little humble pie. What stuff don't you freeze? Give me one ingredient. Like a calamari comes in. Like the calamari. Comes in quick. We never freeze it. So the only stuff you don't freeze is the stuff that comes in frozen. A 
Astounded by what he's just witnessed in the kitchen, Gordon seeks out the owners. Terry and Carol, I'm panicking. Pinto, it's crap. I, um, I don't get what he's trying to do there, Jimmy, in terms of all this fresh frozen stuff. Everything in, fresh, cut up, portioned, frozen. It's 45 minutes into dinner service, and most customers are still waiting for their food. I feel like I'm drinking more than I'm eating. <laughs> You know, that's probably the reason I don't wear a watch, because it takes a head table long here. The nightmare of Cafe 36 is still food time. Not being able to get your food out of the kitchen really makes your job as a server difficult, because that's pretty much the description of your job, to serve. I think they got to catch the shrimp first. Is this slug? Everything seems so slug. Yes, sir. If you have one more person, then it goes faster. Yeah. If you had one more person, it will go faster? Yes, sir. Eduardo. No wonder you've gone so old. You've aged, waiting for the last main course. <laughs> huh? While the kitchen is struggling to cook the food, Gordon also sees a problem with the delivery. Another departure. Holy crap. I'm not aware of any particular reason why we serve on carts. I thought people got pushed into a, right. a mortuary on trolleys, no? Right. Not serving food. Oh, <laughs> Would you like to hold the plate by the hand, or would you want to push a trolley all day long? I would rather hold them by my hand. When the orders finally make it to the tables, customers find it's not worth the wait. Oh, this is rare. 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 Is that what you ordered? Uh, no, medium. medium. Bloody rare. Yeah, I might have to send this one back. I'll be right back. Please. The New York's supposed to be medium. Huh? The New York's supposed to be medium. What is it? Medium rare, right? They said Tickets medium. Says medium. Okay. They said medium when I was here. Why don't you just put it under the grill, Pinto, as if we're in a position to argue? My things come back, it doesn't mean I'm a bad cook. And it's not just Chef Pinto's cooking that catches Gordon's eye. What are these up here for? They're not even seasoned asparagus, are they? No, not right now. They're very expensive. They're very expensive, so why have you got them on? A veggie of the day. A veggie of the day? Yes. Yeah. Aren't you bothered about the cost? Yeah, it comes from the different part of the world, Chef. We, we can get it. It comes from the different part of the world. Are you listening to this? Yes, Chef. It's the most expensive vegetable on the market. You want that? And it's out of season. And you've just put them on four dishes. This is unbelievable. Tonight, I'm starting to see new cooking techniques that I've never, ever seen before. Slow thaw fresh frozen, but what's becoming really clear is that he seriously is taking this lovely couple for a ride, and it's got to stop. Is this true about Pinto? He's telling you he's screwing you. Does that, could that be? I hope not. We don't know our ass from a hole in the ground. I'm so scared. During dinner service, Owners Carol and Terry were stunned by Gordon's criticism of their head chef, Pinto. We don't know our ass from a home. I'm so scared. He opened our eyes to a lot of things throughout the restaurant that people have been taking advantage of us, so we have to take a good, hard look at everything. After a long, difficult dinner service, the customers who have eaten are not exactly thrilled. Chicken's a little overdone. OK, so too soupy and the chicken is overdone. I didn't eat much of my salad because I didn't really care for the dressing. And those who haven't been served are not willing to wait. We got here at 5 after 7. <laughs> OK, so <laughs> five, five minutes, I'll give five minutes and I'm done. Okay. OK. All right, table five is going to walk out in five minutes. Or is this the pace we move at? Is this the fastest we go? Pinto has one speed, and that speed is fuck you. How long has it been? Gosh. Almost two and a half hours. Some of the customers have given up completely on Cafe 36 and are leaving without even eating an appetizer. It's just been a long day. I have to really take it all in. It hurts. After a rough night, Gordon confronts the staff. Overall, honestly, pretty disappointing both in the kitchen and the dining room. There's one thing in here that I would change instantly. On the back of my experience today, and that's you. Why? You are the executive chef. You're supposed to be a leader, a motivator. You are seriously, seriously leading this place into bankruptcy. 
because the big problem in this restaurant, Pinto, is in the kitchen. Fresh frozen, slow thaw. I think that Pinto deserved every single solitary second of that ass reaming that he got from Gordon. If this was your restaurant, would you be freezing everything, portioning it, and then dropping in bowls of water to defrost it to recook it? Okay. Yes or no? No, I wouldn't. Embarrassing! Do you think I enjoyed standing there and listening to this? You know, I'm a proud man. Get the message. Now show me your pride. Chef, because I'm fucking waiting. And unfortunately, whether you like it or not, the two people behind you, it's them you're dragging down. That's why I'm pissed. So cut the bullshit. Get ready for some changes, because Cafe 36 needs it urgently. Good night. After witnessing a night of inefficient and bizarre cooking techniques, Gordon's first priority is to implement changes in the kitchen. If there's one thing this restaurant needs right now, is something authentic, yes? Yes. This restaurant needs a good risotto. You, you and me, we're going to cook a risotto together. Here is all our fresh ingredients. When I say fresh, I mean fresh. I bought them myself this morning. Are you ready? Yes, yes. yes. Let's go. Cooking with the Chef Ramsay was, it was pressure. There was a lot of pressure was on. This is just a really nice, simple uh, porcini risotto. Mushrooms in. Let's saute it already. Finished with Parmesan cheese and a little knob of butter. Make sure you're happy with it. Mushroom risotto. First change, yeah, risotto, yeah. Second change, we'll be taking the plates out tonight by hand, faster and not running up and down with this fucking thing all the way up. Hey, we're going to carry the plates, yeah, by hand. When Chef Ramsay took the carts off the floor, it was great. I hated them from day one, so to me, it was like, yes. <laughs> I do have a usage for the trolleys, because tonight, we'll come up with a goat's cheese salad special, where you'll be dressing the salad, gives us more time in the kitchen, and we'll be doing, like, goat's cheese fritters. I absolutely love the idea of having the salad made at the table side, sort of a little bit of entertainment and showmanship. Yeah, and mixed greens in, touch of salt, Touch of pepper, honey mustard vinaigrette. Yeah. I go to cheese fritters. Yeah. One, two. Let me get it back. Salad on. Madame and Madame. So light, vibrant, exciting, and more importantly, we're changing today. We're changing. changing. We're changing big time. Yeah. As Gordon starts to turn around Cafe Thirty Six, he knows that what really needs to change is Terry. I'm going to identify your uh, weaknesses and improve your strengths. Right. And, you know, Pinto is a big weakness. And don't ever be intimidated by controlling chefs. And you've got to right. be strong. You must be strong. Absolutely. And I can see that now. And I think a lot of it was I'm more involved in, you know, the mundane daily operation, the mm -hmm. things that I shouldn't be doing, mm -hmm. and not watching the things that I should. And I mm -hmm. can see that now. What's at stake is my dream, and I'm not going to let anybody take it away from me. And you have got to start being firm, because if you're not firm, they're never ever going to respect you. Hi, good evening. Welcome this evening. Four. We have you right over here. Lots of people coming. All right, let's rock and roll. Hi, how are Hello, you? Hello, how are you tonight? Good. The feeling going into service. There you are, man. Getting all charged up and ready to go. Let's all pull together and let's get this roll. The chef has prepared a porcini mushroom risotto today. My special salad is a goat cheese fritter salad. Cheese salad. OK. Two salads. I'm going to have that filet. How do you like your filet? Uh, medium. OK, take control now, yeah? You listen and say yes or no, yeah? Yes, yes. Let's Too go. Masala. There you go, fill it. Yeah, medium on, yes? New York strip medium, yeah? What's next, please? I got a crab cakes, a smoked salmon appetizer, and an onion soup, please. Right now, I'm pretty stressed out about tonight. I don't want anything to go like last night. We're trying to make this thing a smooth operation tonight. Two risotto, a trout, and a scallop. OK, good. Let's go. Two risotto, yes? Good presentation. First one I've ever done. Thank you. Looks good. The goat cheese is excellent. But while the special salads are a huge hit, 
They haven't had their appetizer yet on this table. It's gonna take a few minutes. I want some business. Half hour or so. Cafe 36's characteristically slow service continues to leave customers waiting. 45 minutes already. Right. Well, we go with that one now, yeah? Two salmon, one shank, one 36 bill, yes? Working, well, chef. Working, yeah. How long? Three minutes, four minutes. I'm ready, I'm on it. Pinter, change gear. You always know thought changing gear? Yep. Unfortunately, you're still in neutral. Is it the risotto that's taking so long? I'm sorry, I don't know why. I, to, I swear it should be the next ticket up. I'm tired of working someplace where I can't get the food out, I can't service my customers. Five has been waiting no less than an hour and 15 to an hour. It's gonna be like a five minutes. All right, they told me that like 30 minutes okay. ago. I swear to God. I just think Pinto's making this crap up as he goes along. It's all a lie. Unbelievable. Oh my God. You know, bread's veggies for one, for two there. That, that, that's what I said. I can say it over and over. First time you said one, then two, no, and then I one. No, I didn't. You said you got one there, and it's two I know. veggies. I said three. Look at the book. Look at the book. Hey, I got shit to do. I, I know. Pinto, we have to speed up over here now, yeah? Yeah? We'll work as a team, please, yeah? yeah? Last night, you worked as individuals. Tonight, we're going to work as a team, yeah? Yes, yeah. Let's go. I'm not having food hanging around tonight. No, no chance. They just got theirs. They were seated before us, so... It's been, it's been a while, though. Chef Pinto, you lied to me and told me it's almost ready. How long, baby? It's gonna take a few minutes, bro. I can't fire all these pans. I just can't do it. We're halfway through service, and the good news is we've sold 42 salads, which is great. Sadly, the bad news is that Barney and Pinto, they don't like each other, and that's affecting the service. Things are slowing down, and customers are now starting to complain. Damn. We should have another New York medium. All right? No. You guys aren't even working together. Come on, Barney, you gotta keep it driving. Don't let it sink, let's go. I don't know where we are. I don't know what you guys are fired. You haven't called anything out. Huh? I mean, I don't oh, know okay. what's going on. Pinto doesn't listen to me, and I don't know, there's gotta be a better system than what we're doing because it's just not working. It's been a long waited. This is cold. It isn't even hot. And not even the center is hot. I'm gonna go ahead and take these. This is the entree size portion, correct? That's not an entree. That's appetizer. Pinto really can't cook on the line, and Pinto really can't run a kitchen. On the ticket, it's got risotto dinner. Unbelievable. Barney, talk to your cook, yeah? Let's go. make it a larger portion. And it's too thick. Pour some more okay. stock in there. Okay, I'll thin it down. Oh, my god. Now we're pulling that down. We're going down, boys. Just, just two seconds, you. You as well, yeah? Just come here for two seconds. You, I'm not doing that in front of the customer. Come here, you. None of you are talking. You have got to talk together. He needs you, yeah, you need him. So we go back in there and we work at it. If he's sauteing, you've got to expedite. He's trying to expedite, plate and cook. He can't get in front of the tickets, OK? Now, come on! I agree entirely with what Chef Ramsey had to say about our performance this evening. We weren't working together as a team, and it hurt us. It should be up in just moments. So all I'm doing is lying to people right now. That's it. You know, I'm safe. With some of his customers still waiting for their food and others giving up altogether, Brian reaches his breaking point. Now I gotta say two things that are really hard. You're hiding and you need to be fired. Let me tell you something now. You work for me. I don't work for you. You're away. Remember who you work for. I'm sorry, I don't know why. I, I swear it should be the next ticket up. Tonight, the waiters of Cafe 36 took a lot of heat for the problems in the kitchen, and Brian is truly frustrated. Now I gotta say two things that are really hard. You're hiding, and you need to be fired. Let me tell you something now. You work for me. I don't work for you. Brian made some very harsh comments that were extremely out of place and it made me very upset to the point that I almost fired him on the spot. But this has gone on way too far. He's not If you don't like learning. working here, then keep your opinion to yourself. I want Terry to start telling everybody what to do instead of letting the inmates run the asylum. You're a waiter. Remember who you work for. After experiencing yet another disappointing dinner service, Gordon is curious to hear what the head chef has to say. OK. Um... Pinto, what do you think about tonight's service? It was, it was excellent. It really was. Everybody got involved. What kitchen were you in? Pardon me? Uh, Barney, 
truthfully. Is that the way you saw service tonight? No, I thought it was bad. It was really rough. Once again, complete different opinions. You're right, though. Service was terrible. Nothing was coming together, no communication, no coordination, no teamwork. Customers waited tonight. They waited big time. What did we do? What's going on? How can this happen to us? What did we do? Let me just give you three major issues that's wrong with this restaurant. The first issue is the service is way too slow. The second problem, the food is too inconsistent. Inconsistency is a killer. The third reason, and one of the most important reasons why this restaurant is not busy, it's not contemporary. A 1970s restaurant trying to compete in the 2008 market. We're behind the times. We are behind the times. OK, I'm going now. I've, I'm working all night. You know, by the time I see you tomorrow morning, we should have a well-put-together plan. Good night. That night, Gordon and his team went to work, doing away with the restaurant's old-fashioned and outdated look creating a more contemporary restaurant. Right, good, good morning. morning. How are we feeling? No, I'm thrilled. A big day Thanks, today, man. yes? Today's relaunch day. We're going to turn it around, yeah, and put it back on the map. In we go. Come through, come through, come through. Oh, wow. Oh, my How God. cool is this? Oh, It's God. modern. It's awesome. Holy cow. Oh, wow. We've got a black and white color theme. Yes. And who knew I love black and white so much? Oh my God. It's been brought up into the 21st century. Beautiful. It's a new restaurant. When I walked in the door, I just instantly felt alive. We've got rid of the old fuddy-duddy stuff. And now it's a really nice, sharp, cutting-edge feel. I uh, absolutely am getting choked up. It's just, what a dream. Hey, look at the plates. I... No more mismatched china. All the same. It's wonderful. It's amazing. Beautiful. Now that we have matching plates, <laughs> it looks like we know what we're doing back here. The booze have been upholstered. I love the black. We've got new chandeliers. I'm just so thankful. It's unbelievable. A restaurant can't just survive on a new decor. Yes, it needs a new menu. You have to go with it. So we've gone modern, yes. fresh approach, and more importantly, we've condensed the menu. I think the kitchen should respond favorably to the new menu. Unless they screw it up with their usual bullshit, it should work out. It's seasonal as well. We have everything in season. I think that the new menu is going to make the kitchen faster. And before dinner, we'll make sure we taste one of everything, yes? So you know what you're selling. Tonight, head chef Pinto is cooking from the newly designed menu and has one more chance to prove himself to Chef Ramsay. First of all, just look at the difference. Appearance, plates, portion size. Start from the top, onion soup gratiné, yeah? Perfect for the winter. Crab cakes, grilled chicken sandwich, the grilled albacore tuna, Mediterranean ragu, filet mignon tartare. Uh, you like steak tartare? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then one of my favorites, the duck confit. Have a little taste. Get familiar with the uh, taste and textures. I love that tartare. Wonderful. It's a whole new beginning, and Chef Ramsay did that for us. Let's take advantage of tonight, and let's show LaGrange, yes, yeah, what we're made of. With the new menu and decor, Carol and Terry face one of the most important nights ever at Cafe 36. Well, welcome to Cafe 36. We're glad to have you here at our grand reopening. Mm -hmm. Personality has changed. It's more Carol and Terry. When the orders come in, can we call out the orders so we got some form of vibrance in here a little right. bit, yes? Good job. Yeah. And what do you think of the new menu? I think it's sharp. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, Good. it's night and day. Tonight, we have to be faster, yeah, and keep the standards up, yes? Great chance. Big, big, big night tonight. And personally, I've never, ever wanted a dinner service to work as well as tonight because of Terry and Carol, because they so deserve it. And they're really endearing. But I honestly hope that Pinto doesn't screw this one up. Please, not tonight. Order in. Order on, Pinto. All right, we're coming up with it. Pinto. Risotto. Order on. Mario, one crab cakes. As the orders make their way to the dining room, Brian. Your food's here. The dinner service gets off to a good start. That's good. Oh, I should have got that. You just got your entrees. How is everything so far? Really good. Good. Okay. Delicious. Fresh food, simple menu. Love it. All right, am I ever going to get a crab cake with this? Right, talk to me. Next table coming, please. Mario, I got a four. Four crab cakes. But barely an hour into service, and the kitchen's bad habits are back. Table number, please. 13, please. 13. How long? Take like uh, six minutes. 
Oh my God, that's still not ready? I got every burner full, man. If this one empties, I put something else on it, okay? Pinto, we have to go a little bit now, yeah? When you're looking at all these tickets, sometimes things can be a little slow. Pinto, if we go quiet, nothing's happening. We need some form of voice in here. Pinto was running the tickets. Well, Pinto got behind, but he's the chef, and he should be in control of the situation. All right, come on, guys, you've got to talk to each other. Yes, chef. We've just got to talk to each other, guys. Pinto. 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 Executive chef certified dead. Once again, Pinto's inefficiency in the kitchen is upsetting both customers we want to eat. and staff. I'm just pissed off. I just can't take this, man. I hope Terry straightens us out. The real problem right now is they can't seem to finish any food back there. It's just like really bad sex. It keeps going on and on, and at some point, you just wish it would be over. Cancel my entree. Cancel your entree? Right, I'm leaving. It's been more than three fair. It's been 6.30. Okay. It's been three, three and, and a half hours. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's a little, I've got a pork chop. little hectic tonight. Pinto's got to go. I'm just standing there doing nothing. I know. I, I agree. Nobody's communicating. No one's even stepping up to the mark. And watch what Barney's doing. Barney's now trying to read the tickets, cook, saute, and expedite. Yeah? And not Pinto is just trying to dress the salad. Not good enough. That's not no, a team effort. Not, he, I can see it. From Nothing's been directed. Now. And it's a no, fucking it's show. No, no, Unbelievable. No. Gordon Ramsay really did give me a swift kick in the butt to say, you know, wake up. If you're going to have your business be a success, you have to take charge. What are we waiting on? Where are we at? So I need us two crab cakes right now. Coming up. All right, come on, guys. Hey. I need to get this food out. I got tables I got to turn. We can't fall behind. Thank you, Eddie. Go. All right. Talk to me, what's next? With Terry finally staying on top of his chef. Two steak tartare, apple salad, crab cake. The kitchen gets back on track. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, you got our food. Thank you. Two salmon. There's two salmon in the oven. OK, beautiful. Keep it coming, guys. I got to get this dining room turned over. We got a lot of people waiting. I think Terry's eyes have been opened up. A two risottos. Who is also play right there? You know, you should give everybody the benefit of the doubt, but you should also demand performance out of them. That's all I want, it's just communication. For the first time since Gordon's arrival, the back of the house. Let's see if we can finish these last two tables strong, shall we, yeah? Yippee. Let's go. Is in sync with the front. Follow, I'm following. Worth yeah. the wait. Worth the wait. If you're here to Terry, Why, please. Terry Hello. and Carol. Yeah. And it was Terry who made it happen. You have a beautiful restaurant. Thank you. It is. It's, it's, it's so Stunning. much more beautiful. Yes. And an amazing, amazing, amazing potential. Yeah. Very rare you come across a couple today in this industry. And the back of the commitment it takes, the sacrifice, the personal life, you're so unselfish, it's untrue. And you're so perfect for each other. It's extraordinary. And that's quite rare. And I really mean that. I can't tell you what to do with Pinto, but you know my feelings. Mm -hmm. But when you make a decision, I hope to hell that you don't make it too late. You talked about change, you know, and that we have to do that, and I can't, yes. you know, hold back any longer. No and more we have to on do the radio. And, no more. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest thing I've learned is I have to definitely be more aggressive in running my business. I have to take full charge and I have to change, and I've already changed. You've done so much for us. Yeah. Um, and it's just an incredible feeling that you've done that for us. Uh, you, you know, you said we had to get rid of the old, and, and back from the 30s. Yes. 30 years ago. Yeah, so we got to... Oh, you guys. Oh, you're so so nice. this is from our well, own personal crazy. wine collection. Oh, my God, no, I can't take that. Come on. That's a bottle of Chateau Chem 1976. It's you said out with 30 years ago, that. so we're past it. No, but, oh, God. Can I keep it here for when I come back? Absolutely. And when I come back, we can have a glass together. We would love that. Would you? Absolutely. Yes. God, what are you two <laughs> like? You two, honestly. Honestly, you're like the most perfect mum and dad. Unbelievable. Right. Thank you so much. Oh, dear. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Yes, you. Thank you. And you deserve everything. Thank you know you. that. You stand strong. And you listen to this lady, yes? Yeah. She's the love of my life. Thank you. Thank you, darling. Congratulations. So much. There's absolutely uh, a light at the end of the tunnel. 
And in fact, it's bigger than just a light. I think there's a whole sunshine coming out. Okay. Best wishes. Thank you. Yes. We got work to do, right? Yeah, we do. Oh, they do. <laughs> That's tough, really tough. What can you say about a couple that have sacrificed so much to get where they have today? And what can you say about a couple that are so devoted to each other? Incredible. I know what you can say. Damn, I hope they succeed, because they deserve to. So much. There is one last footnote to this story. Relaunch night was the last night Pinto worked at Cafe 36. He left the very next day. And Barney was promoted to head chef.